Welcome, welcome everyone. Praise God. I'm so glad that you've joined us today and may you experience the presence of God wherever you may be in the world right now. Grace and peace be multiplied to you all throughout the knowledge of our God and Father of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I trust you're well and also your family are well in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. And today we've come to the end of our series, which of course, if you've been you know, following our broadcast is the principle of divine healing, praise God. And today my subtitle is Faith and Belief in Your Redemption. Faith and Belief in Your Redemption, praise the Lord. And, uh, you know, every time we give time to the word, we are being rewarded richly. So I encourage you to take your notes, have your Bible and release your faith with us as we hear the word of God preached today. Amen. Let's open up in prayer right now. Mighty, great, everlasting Father, we honour you, we give you praise, we give you all the glory. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness. We thank you, Lord, for your mercy. I pray, mighty God, the anointing will rest upon me as I teach, mighty God, your people. And I pray, mighty God, that your anointing will rest upon each and every one of them right now. They learn to comprehend your engrafted word. And may this application of the word of God, might God bring fruit in their life in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, I appreciate you and I welcome you. Take glory, Father. Take glory, Son. And take glory, Holy Spirit, in the mighty, majestic name of Jesus, as I cover myself with the resurrection power of the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. Praise God. Amen. And I want to begin by saying, praise God, that the most prevalent error uh, made by people seeking divine healing, including those who are, you know, fully convinced of this truth, is the confusing of hope with faith. And for instance, some people, when prayed for, often hope that they will be better, you know, in the future. But hope is by no means faith at all. Uh, you see, hope is only passive quite different from faith, in fact, uh, which is active and creative as well. Um, you see, hope, uh, which does in fact accompany faith, has the element of uncertainty. It looks forward to a possibility, while faith looks backward to an accomplished fact. Amen. And that is a great principle of divine healing. So what is the accomplished fact regarding our healing? Well, we can look at the word of God to find out, of course. Let's look at three main scriptures regarding the accomplished fact regarding our healing. I want to begin, first of all, with the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 53, verse 4. And this is a foundational, foundation, foundational, praise God, scripture for healing, praise the Lord. And it reads, for he, speaking of Jesus, has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. In the Hebrew, uh, the words grief and sorrow, they mean sickness and pain. So Jesus bore our sicknesses and carried our pains. Hallelujah. What Jesus did was entirely in fact for us, not for himself. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Now looking at the New Testament in the book of Matthew, chapter 8, verse 17, and it reads, that it might be fulfilled, which is spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, himself, Jesus, took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Another reference in the New Testament is 1 Peter 2.24, and it reads, who his own self bare our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed amen by the stripes of jesus you and i praise god we are the healed today and so when we look in the book of matthew chapter 18 verse 16 the bible says in the mouth of two or three witnesses let every word be established so i've given you three great references right here Praise God. Amen. And so we can clearly see that Jesus took our infirmities 
and he bore our sicknesses. And since he bore them, we should not have to bear them at all. Amen. What a mighty and merciful God we serve. Amen. Our Father God really does care for us. And he wants you and I to be healed just as much as he wants us you know, to be saved. Amen. We gave our life to the Lord, praise God. And our salvation is on exactly the same platform of healing as well. And in fact, you know, if you're a Christian, you have been redeemed, hallelujah, from sickness, from poverty, and from separation from God. In fact, we have a threefold redemption package. Number one, healing belongs to you and I. Therefore, sickness is not our portion. Number two, wealth belongs to us. Therefore, poverty is not our portion. And number three, we have fellowship with God. Hallelujah. And this is the privilege that we have as children of God. We're no longer separated from our heavenly father. Amen. And thank God that we are redeemed from the curse of the law. Praise be to God. We are redeemed from the curse of the law. You know, let me point out that the highest honor God has conferred upon you and I, praise God, is to be joint heirs and fellowship with our heavenly father. We are fellowshipping with God the father. Amen. His son and the Holy Spirit in carrying out God's plan for redemption of the human race. Amen. Praise God. We are redeemed. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. And so thanking God that we have given the opportunity. God has given us the opportunity and the great honor of the message of reconciliation, the message of redemption to the unsaved. Amen. And the book of Matthew, chapter 10, verse 8, it commands us, praise God, and I love this scripture. It says, heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out devils, praise God. Freely you have received and freely give, amen. So salvation is a free gift unto us. Healing is another free gift given unto us by Heavenly Father. Amen. And reconciliation, praise God, no longer separated from my Heavenly Father, is a free gift indeed in Jesus' name. Amen. So we are freely given uh, from, uh, from our Heavenly Father great and wonderful things. And thank God for the de deliverance. Amen. The power of the gospel, the power of the good news that we can share with others to set them free to set the captives free in Jesus' name, only because we are free, only because we have been redeemed, amen. And the book of Ephesians chapter one, verse seven, it reads, hallelujah, it lets us to know that we are the redeemed through the power of the blood of Jesus. It reads, in whom, Jesus Christ, we have redemption through his blood, amen. We have been redeemed, by the precious blood of Jesus, praise God. And the Webster Dictionary defines the word redeem as number one, to buy back, and number two, to free from captivity by payment of ransom. Praise the Lord. Jesus Christ, he paid for us all in full. We have a full redemption through Jesus, amen. And so to walk in the highest kind of faith, you and I must know the reality of our redemption in Christ Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Not as a doctrine, not as a philosophy, not as a creed, but an actual redemption out of the authority of Satan. Praise God. Amen. And so we must testify as to what God has done for us, including what he has provided for us. Praise God. Testify to the nations testify to our families, testify to the community around us, testify to the world. We have social media available, praise God. Testify, tell everyone about the goodness of our God to us. And so God, praise God, has provided for you and I to be healed physically, just as much as he provided for us to be born again, to be saved, amen. We receive the remission of sin and become new creatures, a new creation in Christ Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. You're so merciful unto us. And we know this through the scriptures, of course. This is how we get faith for healing. And in fact, every blessing 
in Christ Jesus. You see, faith rests with confident assurance on God's word, though it receives no encouragement at all by what the eye may see. Glory be to God. You see, it was by faith that God, our Father, created the world. When there existed nothing but the eternal emptiness of space, praise God. And so, as his offspring, we have been given creative power by him to create our own world, just as he created his own world, the world that we live in today, by the word of his mouth. Amen. And we create our world by what we say, whether it's for raising a family, uh, whether it's for uh, career advancement or business or, or marriage or financial breakthroughs. Amen. We having the same faith, we believe and therefore we speak what we want to come into being. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, faith, praise God, and believing are how we access the promises of God. And faith and believing also does something, praise God, it has something to do with our redemption as well, which of course includes healing, because the Bible says that the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And we can see this quite clearly in the book of James, chapter 5, verse 15. And it reads, And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the law shall raise him up. And if he, she, had committed sins, they shall be forgiven, praise God of him or of her for the glory of God. So the word of faith is a noun. The word believe is a verb. It's an active verb. And so we have to believe God and act on his word. We have to believe God and act on his word. And we can see uh, a good example of this in the Bible of a man who acted on the word of God. Amen. He believed what the word of God says. And in fact, he wasn't even under the covenant. He was outside the covenant, praise God. And that is the centurion soldier. He came to Jesus on behalf of his sick servant. And um, praise God, when Jesus said in the book of Matthew, chapter 8, verse 17, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered, Jesus in verse 8 and he said speak the word only and my servant shall be healed so this servant um he wasn't actually even around in the area he was quite a distance away but his master the, the lovely kind centurion besought Jesus on his behalf that he wanted healing for his dear servant praise God and so Jesus said, I'll come to your house. But he said, no, you don't have to come to my house at all. You just speak the word. I believe it. And I know and I trust and I have faith in you, in your words, that my servant shall be healed. Amen. So praise God. So in verse eight, hallelujah, Jesus said to him, go thy way. Hallelujah. And thou hast believed, as thou hast believed, so be it unto thee. Amen. So. He can see, in fact, that this particular individual had such faith. In fact, he had great faith. Amen. And in turning to disciples, Jesus said in verse 10, I have not found so great faith. No, not in Israel. So thank God. Amen. That our centurion and his servant, they were rewarded with healing. Amen. They were honored with healing. Praise God. Hallelujah. So Jesus is still today looking for faith. Hallelujah. Our faith must come to our Heavenly Father. Amen. Through Jesus. And so we have to act our faith. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. On the word of the physician, for instance. Amen. You know, we act on what the physician says to us on a doctor. You know, if he takes, if he says to us, take this medicine three times a day, if you do take medicine, you would actually, and if you're wise, you would actually take heed to his instructions. Amen. Um, to a solicitor, for instance, if he gives you instructions, you know, you, you, you know his authority. Amen. You trust his authority. And therefore, praise God, you will take heed to the words that he says. 
and you act on what he says. And the same thing is with the Lord God Almighty. We take heed to the integrity of the word of God and we act on the word of God accordingly. Amen. You know, for example, another example, you know, if your mother what was to, to say something, you wouldn't question her authority. You wouldn't question what she said. You believe what she said. Not so. Hallelujah. And so you believe in her word and you'll act on it. Praise God. You will simply act on what she has said. Praise God. That's if you honor your mother. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Now, you know, if you're a child of God, it takes faith to get hallelujah into the family of God. It took faith for you to be saved. And therefore, it takes faith for you to be healed also. And no matter what you're believing God for, it will take your faith according to your faith being unto you in the name of Jesus. Amen. You see, it's not a matter of just having faith. It's a matter of finding out what is yours and then acting on it. Amen. So in order to have faith, we have to hear the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of God. Amen. Romans chapter 10 verse 17 establishes that fact. Amen. So we have to find out what the word of God is saying in order for us to have faith. Amen. Praise God. So never ask, you know, the, the, yourself the question, do I believe or do I have faith? You just simply say, that's what God says. And then I act accordingly in the name of Jesus. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the word of God says, praise God, in Psalm 30, verses 1 and 2, it says, I will extol thee, O Lord. For thou hast lifted me up and hast not made my foes to rejoice over me. O Lord my God, I cried unto thee and thou hast healed me. Amen. So we act accordingly. And acting accordingly is having correspondent actions as to what the word of God says. So we actually speak what the word of God says. Praise God. We'll say, I will exalt thee, O Lord. For you have lifted me up and has not made my foes of sickness to rejoice over me. O Lord my God, I called unto thee, I cried unto thee, and you have heard me and you have restored me to health. Praise the Lord. Amen. So that's what we actually do with the scriptures. Amen. We formulate the scriptures, praise God, for ourselves. Amen in alignment with what the word of God actually says. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Didn't God say that Jesus, by his stripes, that we are healed? Yes, he certainly did. And since God said it, then we have to believe it and act upon it with the spoken word of God. Amen. So simply speaking, because you are a Christian, you don't have to try to get faith because you already have faith for healing. Amen. You just need to top it up. Amen. With hearing the word of God, applying the word of God to your life. Praise the Lord. You simply have to act on the word. Amen. Act on what the word says. Praise God. You just believe that by the stripes of Jesus, you are healed and you are made whole. Amen. What did the book of Revelation chapter 12 verse 11 declare? Hallelujah. Praise God. And it says, praise God, it reads, and they, and we, overcame him, that Satan, on his cohorts by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. So we are, according to the scriptures, the scripture just read, we are already overcomers. We have overcome by the precious blood of Jesus. We have overcome sickness and disease, every calamity, every evil works of the devil by the precious blood of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. We have overcome sickness. Amen. Already by the precious blood of Jesus, by faith. Amen. But remember, because Satan is the God of this world, and it states so in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, he will try to exercise authority over you in this life, over you and I, he will come as a roaring lion and he will try to derail us. But we know that we serve the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. Amen. Praise the Lord. And he will try to dominate us. He will try to keep us from walking in our redemptive rights. But you and I overcome the devil every time. No matter what the test may be, we are overcomers. Amen. We can overcome him because of the precious blood of Jesus. That's our testimony. Amen. We overcome him because we have the word of God. Praise the Lord. We overcome him because we have 
the mighty name of Jesus. The weapons of our warfare, they're not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So we have great weapons, the weapon of praise, thanksgiving, and adoration. Praise the Lord. Amen. And thank God for the precious, wonderful, wonder-working power of the blood of Jesus. You simply have to know what the blood of Jesus has brought for you. The blood of Jesus has brought deliverance from the power, the authority of darkness from Satan. And, and there's a wonderful translation by virtue of the new birth into the kingdom of light. Amen. So with that knowledge, praise God, you then add your testimony to that knowledge. You stand your ground in the name of Jesus. You confess what the word of God has done. You confess what the name of Jesus has done. You confess what the blood of the lamb has wrought. Thank you, Jesus. There is power in the blood of Jesus. Amen. Well, that power in the blood of Jesus won't just work automatically. You have to add your testimony for the glory of God. Amen. Praise God. So why don't you and I now testify as to what the blood of Jesus is doing for us? Amen. Please repeat after me. I am an overcomer. I overcome the devil in every confrontation. He never overcomes me. I overcome him by the blood of the Lamb. I put my faith in the blood of Jesus. I declare that sickness cannot lord itself over me. I believe and I testify that I am healed. I am delivered. I am saved. I am protected. I am provided for in all areas of my life, in the name of Jesus, amen, praise God, I hope you're able to keep up with me, praise God, so faith begins, in fact, where the will of the Lord is known, and once you know the will of the Lord, it's easy to believe, it's easier to receive what God has for you, so keep, I want to encourage you right now, keep fueling your faith with the word of God, and keep speaking the word of of God. It will never fail you. Amen. The word of God is too faithful to fail. Praise God. Let's close with prayer right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Lord, I pray for everyone who has studied with me today and throughout this month of September that, Heavenly Father, we are all going from glory to glory, from strength to strength, from faith to faith, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, Siki Babakaya Santa, Heavenly Father, touch that person now from the bed of languishing, in the name of Jesus. Oh, Siki Babakaya Santa, I plead the resurrection power over you right now, and I declare your healing in Jesus' precious name. Sickness will not rise up a second time in your life. You are healed in Jesus' name. Rise up and be healed in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' precious name. Well, the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and lift up his countenance upon you. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for joining us. Praise God once again. And God bless you. And I trust I'll see you next week. In the name of Jesus. God bless you.